Hey guys, welcome to my channel, Investing Untangled. Hope you're all doing well. On this channel, I post detailed business and stock analysis videos and also educational content about stock market investing. And if this is something that interests you, then hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and follow my content here. This is a follow-up video in which I'm going to discuss the income statement of a company. I'll show you how to analyze an income statement, what are all the factors, all the parameters that you have to look at, and I'll explain to you all the things, all the items there are on an income statement. In my previous video, I discussed the balance sheet, and here is the income statement. And I'm again continuing the example of Nike like I did in my previous balance sheet video. So this is the 10K, the latest 10K, which is the annual report of Nike, and this is the income statement from this uh, annual report. Every income statement starts with the first item which is revenues and revenues you can understand that's actually the sales all the money that comes into the company by the selling of its products or services and that is revenues. So for Nike it was 37 billion dollars in 2020 everything here is in millions so 37 403 millions is 37.4 billion dollars the next item right after revenues is cost of sales and cost of sales means what is the money that was actually put into making all the products that the company is selling so in nike's case it will be all the money that went into manufacturing all these sports shoes and other sports wear that nike sells and nike spent 21 billion dollars producing all those products that it sold and if you subtract this cost of sales of 21 billion dollars from 37 billion dollars of total revenues you come up with 16.2 billion dollars which is gross profit so gross profit in other words means revenues minus the money that was put into making the products that were sold that brought in all the revenues so this minus total revenues gives you gross profit and the way to look at gross profits is that you should see what it is in terms of you know in relative terms of total revenues so the way you do it is you can divide gross profit in this case it will be 16.24 billion dollars divided by total revenues which is 37.4 billion dollars multiplied by 100 and that gives you a percentage of 43.4 and that is called the gross profit margin or the gross margin so what it means is that nike made a gross profit of 43 percent out of its total sales and now if you flip it the other way around this means nike spent 56 percent of its revenue money in generating the products in manufacturing the products that it sold 56 percent plus 43.4 percent is almost 100 percent so this is how i calculated that so the higher the gross profit margin or the gross margin of a company, the better it is. That means the company is consuming less money in terms of, you know, generating the products that it is selling, which also means actually the manufacturing costs are lower. Since Nike is in the retail industry and retail industry tends to have actually lower gross margins. So that's why it is 43%. I generally like companies which have really high gross margins of over 60%. And a lot of tech companies have those kinds of numbers. For example, if you look at Facebook here, these are the gross margins here. I'm on Morningstar webpage of Facebook. You can see how high gross margins for Facebook are. They're between 70 to 80% year after year. So that shows Facebook spends very little money in terms of selling the service that it does. And obviously it's in a different industry. It is a tech company. And as I said, retail companies generally have lower gross profit margins. Okay, so until now we have checked what is the money that Nike spent in producing or in manufacturing the products that it sold. The next thing is operating expenses. So operating expenses is basically the money that Nike spent in terms of operating its business, which means paying wages of employees and other overhead expenses. And that's what we're gonna check out now. So the next item here is demand creation expense. So Nike spent $3.5 billion on this expense of demand creation. And then operating overhead expense is $9.5 billion. So this basically includes all the general and administrative expenses, wages, etc. And if you add both of these together, that gives you total selling and administrative expenses of $13.1 billion. So this percentage shows you how efficient Nike is as a business, how efficiently is the management running the business. Now, again, if you compare this with a tech company, 
as an example facebook again so here are the operating margins of facebook and you see that operating margins of facebook are much higher than what nike has been generating and this is again as i told you facebook in this sense is a more efficient business because it's in the technology sector and it consumes less money in operating the business you know it, it just has lower expenses in terms of running the business and i'm showing these numbers just to show you a comparison between different sectors but when you are analyzing a company you should never compare you know companies that are in different sectors for example nike you can only compare with another retail company but not with a tech company because obviously different sectors and different industries have different gross margins different net margins etc all right so moving ahead the next expense is the interest expense which is basically the interest that nike pays on the loans that it has so all this money goes to all the financial agencies that nike has raised money from raised loans from so nike paid off 89 million dollars in 2020 as interest expense and then there is other income expense which are other expenses that they're not clearly mentioning what exactly they are and here they were 139 million dollars and the next line here is income before income taxes so this is basically all of the income that we got from all these items before paying any income taxes and next up is then income tax expense and this is the income tax that nike will be paying 348 million dollars and their effective tax rate is 12.1 percent so their net income is 2887 minus 348 million dollars which amounts to 2.539 billion dollars and that is the net income so net income is also called profits and in accounting terms it's also called the bottom line of the income statement while revenues are called the top line of the income statement and you can take similar margins here also so you can divide 2.539 by 37.403 multiply it by 100 and that will give you net profit margin so they don't have that calculated on on their income statement but you can get that number directly from different financial websites like morningstar here i'm on the nike page this also shows you all the gross margins for all these different years and also operating margins and then if you go down here to profitability you will see net margin which is also called the net profit margin and this is also a percentage and this is what net margins for nike are and the way you calculate net margins is as i told you it's basically net income divided by total revenues multiplied by 100 and the higher the percentage of profit margins the better off a company is in terms of profitability and again as i told you retail companies generally do not have great margins so here you see uh, the margins for nike are on the lower side they're uh, between 9 to 12 and sometimes go even below 9 in some of these years and now again if we look at another business like facebook which is again in a in the tech industries so you cannot compare them directly but just for the sake of understanding the income statement here you see how good and how high the profit margins for facebook are so what this means essentially is that facebook in 2020 converted 33.9 percent of its revenues into profits while in the same year nike converted 6.79 percent of its total revenues into profits so this shows you retail industry needs much more capital in uh, you know production and in, in running the businesses than tech industries so this is net income for the entire company and then what you do is you divide this by the total number of outstanding shares so that gives you eps which is earnings per share so this is net income which is also called the earnings of the company and this is then diluted earnings per common share when you divide this by the total number of shares and this information also you can get from many financial websites and here in the case of nike on this morning star page you can see their shares so they had as of 2020 they had 1.5 billion shares outstanding and if you divide 2.5 billion dollars by 1.5 billion shares outstanding that gives you 1.60 dollars per share of profit so the most important things to look at in an income statement are the revenues 
and you should always compare revenues across multiple different years in good companies the revenues should be growing year after year those are the companies that you should be interested in investing in the next thing is you should look at companies that have very high profit margins i like companies that have profit margins about 60 percent it also depends on what sector what industry the company operates i also like companies which have very high operating margins I generally go for companies that have operating margins of over 40%. And again, this also differs from industry to industry. And finally, you have to look at what the net income has been and net income should also be growing year after year. That shows that the company is able to keep its earnings growing. And finally, the last thing you look at are net profit margins. So these are the most important things you look at when you wanna analyze an income statement. In my next video, I'll cover the cash flows of a company and how you can analyze the cash flow statements and define all the important terms and, and show you what numbers you should look at. If you got some value out of this video, please consider leaving a like and subscribe to this channel, Investing Untangled. That'll help my channel a lot. For future videos like this and more educational videos on stock market investing, stay tuned to my channel and I'll see you in my next video.